hot, 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 hot fire. Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another review of Real Housewives of Miami, season six, episode 19. And this is for the reunion part two, Uncensored. And before we get into it, side note. It's high here in Chicago. It got to the 70s today. So I'm literally wearing short sleeves. I'm wearing a dress. Like, I, I was happy. And happy Sunday, by the way. So um, before we get into the review, um, this review, I actually am going to, I'm debating whether I'm going to put this up ahead of time or not because I didn't know that Miami's schedule got really really weird so i kind of again they kind of got screwed over a little bit so what they ended up doing what bravo did is they actually made their review be made their show be reunion be on wednesday which is their normal schedule and then thursday the next day so part two actually came out the very next day i was not prepared for that and did not realize that right away so i just now got to it but I don't want to interfere with the other programs I have. So I think I'm going to have this come out on um, Tuesday. And then Wednesday we'll do... So there's going to be a lot of Real Housewives shows come back to back. So then Wednesday slash Thursday will be Beverly Hills Reunion Part 2. And then the last part of Miami Part 3 will be on Thursday. So you'll get that Thursday, Friday. And um, yeah, so a lot of cranking out. <laughs> um but anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So the part two continues where we left off, where Alexia and um, is go went, goes into Larsa's dressing room to say hi to Marcus first. And then this is, you know, where the mess continued. They are like fighting still. And um, Lisa at first is in the cut, kind of, you know, eavesdropping what they're fighting about. And there's, there's a lot. It seems like what the tension that they have is a lot of unresolved tension. So if Larsa comes back next season, I can imagine that they're going to have problems come next season. Um, and based off the preview for part three, I think they're, because they never really resolved the issues. And it's a lot of issues that have been lingering for a while. Because for one... Alexia has always had issues with the fact that everything that Larsa does is related to a business is never really about her personal life because Larsa doesn't really open up. She claims she does, but that's, we all know that's, not, that's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. And no one believes this relationship with her and Marcus, including Alexia. And I'm sure if Larsa's back next season, because Alexia and Marisol have a podcast right now, by the way. And they've been saying some things about that relationship. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, but Lisa, but she complains up to Larsa about um, one of the things that happened was two seasons ago. So the end of season um, four. So in between season four and season five, we know that Alexia got married to Todd. And apparently Todd, um, Lisa, and Larsa argued the whole entire time during the wedding. Um, and so Alexia has felt a way about it since. And Larsa rebuttals, and this wasn't even the issue until all of a sudden she rebuttaled this, that um, she felt a way that Alexia made her charity event that was aired on the show about her birthday when Alexia's birthday has always been Alexia's birthday. And we've seen Alexia every season likes to celebrate her birthday. So, yeah. She, Larsa was upset that Todd sabotaged the event and made it about Alexia's birthday when her birthday happens to be on that day. And at the end of the day, it's Todd who gave her the gifts. So it wasn't really Alexia doing all that. And... Yeah. Anyway, you know, it doesn't make sense. So in between that, so then Lisa does eventually break it up. And also then the producers and everything break it up because they got to go off break. They have to actually get back on set because this is all happening during like the break. And 
As I get back to the stage to sit down, Lisa mentions that she actually got offered to do an ad for Dildo, like a, a Dildo ad um, for $10,000, but Cheryl, like, you know, Kiki would probably actually be way more interested for it, interested in it, and it actually would fit literally with how, what Kiki's been doing all season, because that's been like the running joke with Kiki and the Dildos of it all the whole entire season. So it actually, business-wise, it would make sense to reach out to Kiki instead. So Lisa explained like, hey, you know, if you want to reach out to this ad company, I can give you the information. And Kiki's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. And then we also find out that <laughs> Kiki has a lot of dildos <laughs> and her daughter sometimes picks it up not knowing that it's, and thinking it's a toy. And it's just like, well, it is, a I mean, cause it is a toy. It's just not that kind of toy, <laughs> clearly. And um, so Andy then asked like, so does your mom watch this show to Kiki? And she's like, yeah, but she doesn't understand it because she doesn't really speak English well. And um, Andy's like, yeah, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> and so when, then we get back to commercial break. So all this is happening during commercial. And then we get back to the actual show of it all, even though, child, the show before the show is equally as comical. This this group just be bringing it. You, we, we know that. But anyway, next. So... This next segment is Elisa's segment, and um, we so then basically, um, Andy asks, Does Lisa's kids still think that Joey's like the gay uncle? And they're like, No, <laughs> she's like, Yeah, no. Um, her son Logan knew the whole time, and the daughter figured like they, they talked it out, they and they love him, and it's fine. And then, uh, Andy had to ask, but it is important for us to know this. We, even though she's exhausting, it is good to know this. She's like, so our, you know, how is the divorce going? Are you, is it close to being finalized? And we know that the answer is no. And it turns out they're arguing now over stupid, petty things like um, art, um, which isn't petty because art is, can be expensive, but then also like plants, um, silverware, like things. So really at the end of the day, it still is petty because it's things and we know that Lenny has the money. So it's just about prolonging the divorce. And um, Lenny constantly keeps sending like leaking things and putting things out to the press and constantly calls the cops. And we also find out, so remember the season finale, um, Lisa was planning a trip to go, you know, out of the country with Jody while her mom and her aunt were going to watch the kids. Well, Lenny called the cops on her, um, on her mom and, and her um, aunt um, while they were out of the country. And it was because the mistress came to the house and was just walking around in lingerie, basically being nosy, making them super uncomfortable. And the... I think her, either her aunt or her mom or both sent a picture to Elisa. was like, what is this? What is, this is disrespectful. And then that's when Lenny called the cops. Um, and also we find out that the rental that she has, there's conditions with that too, even like, so the, Rental has to be still within the proximity of Star Island because that's part of the agreement, the um, separation agreement. And so they have this rental until this house is built. And well, they're all questioning, well, is she, is he going to build the house? And we find out, yes, he legally has to. Like it's, a, it's in the settlement, he legally has to do it. So there's no him not doing it. And so they're all like, good, good, good. And um, then they ask, how does she feel not living actually in that house? And she feels free. She feels liberated. And all the ladies were like, this is all we wanted from you the whole entire time. We wanted you to get your independence and get out of that toxic situation. And I still haven't heard a thank you or nothing from Lisa acknowledging that the ladies were actually really supportive of her. It's like she's just such a child. And it gets worse with this episode, but the next part three is when we're going to really see the Karen. But she, oh, the Karen still came out this episode. 
No worries. She had it covered. But anyway, so before that happens, um, the house is talked about. And then also, um, during the show, remember, um, when he had that condition that a man cannot stay with her in the house that he built. Well, it turns out they can't, he can, cause legally that's not legally. He can't do that, but they just can't get, he just can't, she just can't get married to that person. And in her case, she's not really in a hurry. So she's not really worried about that. And honestly, if I was to get married to someone, I wouldn't want to stay in the house of ex husband built for me. So it, that, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of weird. But anyway, so that's, that's, that's that on that. And so then, um, we also then see after that, speaking of the ladies, you know, having questions, trying to make sure she's okay. Lisa playing the victim again, feels a way that Julia, um, Alexia and Gertie were asking all the questions, even though Gertie actually, right after they showed the segment of them all asking questions, Gertie actually apologized right away. She's like, I did not, the delivery was off. I did not mean for it to come off that way, but we we're just all concerned. And Lisa still is turning around on her like, I felt integrated. I felt attacked, this, 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 and this. And Alexia is not having it. She's like, look, you are very sensitive and you take things the wrong way all the time, which is true. And Gertie is like, and then, cause Lisa the whole entire time, she keeps saying, I was fighting for my life. I was fighting for my life. And to Gertie, who actually literally was fighting for her life. Gertie's like, look, I was actually literally fighting for my life though. You were fighting for finances. And Lisa's like, it wasn't about the finances, it's about the kids. And it's like, Lisa, Yes, we know that Lenny's Basula, but if you can't financially take care of the kids, at the end of the day, there's still another parent. Even though he is Basula, he's still there. He still exists. Okay? It's not the ideal situation, but it'll be okay. In Gertie's case, if she would die, because again, her situation was literally a life or death situation, that makes Russell a single parent. And in this situation, Gertie is the breadwinner of the family. So that changes, that's still a much deeper, worse situation. And the ladies were trying to reason with Lisa on this and she still just isn't hearing it and doing this. <gasps> like she just, she, she was doing that a lot. And even Andy says like, this is not a trauma, this is not like a, a trauma Olympics. And it isn't. And really, e even if it was, the levels are not the same. <laughs> and anyway, so Dr. Nicole tries to reason with her. She's like, look, this whole entire season, you kind of came off way insensitive. Gertie actually just broke the whole entire fourth wall. She was like, you were insufferable this whole season. You just were. You were. Which, no lies told. She was insufferable. It was horrible. And Lisa's still like, oh, this, that's what she does. She, she does that. And Dr. Nicole's like, look, every time where you had the opportunity to not be about yourself, you kind of have failed. Like when Gertie mentions that her cancer situation is much worse than she thought, she has to have a second surgery. Your reaction was non-existent about her. You were just like, I know how to clear a room. Sounding literally like a Karen. And then when Gertie got sick while they're in Mexico, she's too busy looking for her lip gloss. And... Lisa's like, well, I made sure I didn't, it wasn't just about the lip gloss, got everyone's things. And if Gertie is dead, I don't think she cares if she has her things. <laughs> it's just like, guys, it's like, I just want to shake her. So not that in that case, it was a life or death situation, but it could have been because this is, this is still, at this time in the Mexico trip, we know that Gertie still hasn't started chemo yet. And she has, 
had a very invasive cancer. So that health scare could have meant so many things. Like it's it's a no no to get sick when you already have cancer. That like it that you know that really could be a life or death situation because you're already facing a life or death situation and your immune system's already compromised. So come on, people, let's let's make it make sense. But anyway, oh, pardon me. As soon as I turned camera back on, I just literally swallowed down the wrong pipe. But anyway, so now the next segment, we talk about the Mama C to lunch and the debacle of all that and Anna. So, um, and the fact that Anna was invited. Marisol has a floor. Well, at first Alexia tried to take over and have the floor, but then no, Marisol was like, hey, no, I'll speak to it. And she's like, okay. And so Marisol's like, you know, Mother's Day is especially emotional for her because her mom died on Mother's Day. And so she actually thought the brunch was not going to be a messy brunch, which it could have been just a, you know, a celebration of brunches, a celebration, because this is one of those shows where it's not always a mess. The party's not always a mess. Sometimes there's a little bit of a mess, but it's not horrible. But so she felt a way about that. And um, the whole entire time where Marisol's trying to explain her point, Adrienne's like, but the mom seat to brunch wasn't on Mother's Day. It wasn't on the actual day. But it's still, and, and Adriana just kept saying it to the point where Andy got annoyed. She's like, he's like, look, we heard you the first eight times you said that. It's still the idea that you were doing this around Mother's Day. It's like she wasn't getting it and she didn't want to give it, get it. And she just kept saying, oh, her crying, these crocodile tears. And honestly, for that moment, I really did feel bad for Marisol. It's like, yo, turn it off. And yeah, it was, it was just kind of a mess. So, um, but Dr. Nicole in her defense, because Alexia is still hanging on to the fact that Dr. Nicole had more to do with it than she's letting on. And my opinion has slightly changed since watching this reunion because Dr. Nicole, girl, Actually, I take that back. I don't think it has changed because I think I even said this before. I think Dr. Nicole has this overly seeking the seeing the best out of someone to the point where it's almost delusional. I think I said that before, and this is a case of that. Like there was flags that show that they weren't in a good place, and you still invited her. Because according to Dr. Nicole, she thinks she thought that the ladies were all in a good place because Anna told her that. And that was, I, and I'm still confused because the timeline didn't really, I, the timeline was timelining. So the Christmas thing that they had was a different event. I guess it was before the reunion of last year. So yeah, maybe they were in a good place then. And then fast forward, they weren't. I just don't know which order it was because it never really got cleared up, but the point still stands like Dr. Dr. Nicole, you know, you knew a little bit more than what you were letting on there. Anyway. So Dr. Nicole, this makes Dr. Nicole and Alexia, of course, go at it. And Dr. Nicole kind of read her down. She's like, you, because Alexia was like, we're trying to build a friendship. And I thought we were going to, I thought we were good. I thought, you know, I, I trust you this and this and Dr. Nicole's like, you've never trusted me. You never saw it for me. Stop it. That's, that's a lie. You've always actually had a hard on against me. She's like, and really, I just need you to go to the restroom and rub that out. I don't know why you have such a hard on for me, but you always have. Um, but Marisol also mentioned Dr. Nicole, by the way, I forgot to mention that part. Cause Marisol, when she was getting emotional, she said, I, I thought that you and I were like building a friendship. You know, we actually were building something for then you to do that. And, but Dr. Nicole's like, yeah, ma'am, you stop it. Stop it, Alexia, stop it. And 
So then after that, then Alexia states that she actually talked to Anna during the season finale because Anna was at the season finale party, right? At Emilio's penthouse. And she states that she couldn't believe that she, that... So Alexia said to Anna, like, I can't believe you let the ladies use you like that. Because really, Anna didn't give anything. She was just kind of there. and She kind of was used as a prop. Like, and um, Anna, according to Alexia, Anna started crying and straight said to her, like, my issue was never with you. It was with Marisol. And she was like, well, Marisol isn't there to defend herself. So I, I can't really have this conversation. And so, but... So that's kind of how that ended there. But then also, too, Anna did say to Dr. Nicole, we, we know this, um, at the last reunion, to watch out for Marisol. And Andy asked Dr. Nicole, does her trust for Marisol, um, does she trust Marisol the least? Yes or no? Like, do you still not have, do you still not really trust Marisol? And her answer is like, yes, I don't really trust Marisol. I don't really trust her at all. And we find out the reason why was she felt a way that she didn't get invited. And we know this because this, this played out during the show. She felt a way that she didn't get invited to Marisol's event that happened after Mother's Day, that Mother's Day brunch. But the part that was missing was that, and I was wondering why Dr. Nicole was so upset, but now we know why. So we find out that after the cameras went off the air for the Mama C to lunch, all the ladies were there sticking around and Marisol and Dr. Nicole were chummy as if nothing happened. To the point where Marisol was sitting on her lap. They ended up going to Lisa's house to party some more. And yeah. And, and Dr. Nicole actually shows this footage because she captured it on her phone. And Marisol didn't really have an answer for it all the way. She was like, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought that was like Lisa's car. It was Dr. Nicole's car. And it was just a whole mess. But anyway, so that re didn't really get cleared up. But clearly, they're still not really doing the best. But anyway, so then out of nowhere, Adriana chimes in again. She apologizes to Dr. Nicole. But the reason why I'm saying Adriana chimes in again, because this woman has another prop. This is now her third prop. She busses out a rose and gives Dr. Nicole a rose after she apologizes. Like, um, it's giving like um, The Bachelor. <laughs> and all the ladies are just rolling their eyes like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. And um, she also does apologize. So Adriana also does apologize to Alexia for being shady, which was way more than shady. You were, you're trying to like ruin her, but yeah. And she explained why she was trying to do what she did because she felt a way that Alexia was kind of going at um, Lisa about her finances when things may not be all the way together at her house. And which we, at least for me, I did respect that Adriana was trying to do that. But child, the timing was crazy because Adriana's messy. <laughs> it's always going to be wrong. So then Marisol's like, what about my apology? Where's my apology? And child, no apology. <laughs> None. And that's where that segment kind of somewhat ends. At least when it comes to the Dr. Nicole portion of it. Because also at this Mamacita brunch, Julia and Lisa go back and forth. Because Jul so Lisa felt a way that Julia was asking the questions and how she was asking the questions as far as, you know, Lisa leaving her house to go to um, Julia's opera event after the cops were called and all that stuff. And to even Lisa, even though Lisa was insufferable, I will say this and I agree with this and a lot of the ladies even agree with this. It did the way Julia came across. It insinuated that Lisa was not a good mom. She didn't say that, but it just insinuated based off of how she was asking the questions or whatever. And so 
Lisa being like a freaking nuclear time bomb when they went back and forth mentioned something about baby deaths said something like that under her breath to her and Julia didn't catch it when it happened on the show like so when it happened at the moment she didn't catch us what Lisa said but when she watched it back which was a couple days before the reunion or whatever she saw that and so yeah Julia's like I'm not apologizing to you no because Lisa's saying I really really need an apology from you though like you insinuated I was a bad mom and then what made um Lisa also upset was after because Julia her, didn't hear it originally and got the comments afterwards instead of calling Lisa she posted like this whole entire comment on her social media and basically reignited the beef because we saw the rest of the season and after, I mean, after that one blow up, they moved on and moved forward and they were cool. I mean, they were making out, like they were good. Offer, and that's the tricky thing with these shows. It can reignite things when you go back to watch it back and that's literally what happened here. But anyway, so they go to commercial break, but during the break, Julia makes a comment. She's like, even though I'm mad at you, your legs are freaking gorgeous. Well, I just said it to her. And Lisa's like, Lisa jokes back. She's like, hey, you want to make out? Because <laughs> we know that Julia was making out with all the girls this season. <laughs> all of them. Except for Adriana. <laughs> anyway. So then we do get back from the break. And... The conversation of Dr. Nicole getting married. Are you going to get married? And Dr. Nicole, she's kind of afraid to. She says, honestly, I'm afraid to rock the boat. Like, we're good. We're do we're, we've, you know, lived pretty much our whole lives as married. You know, since we have our, you know, we have our child and we have another child on the way. We've been living our life as a married couple for years now. And I'm afraid to, you know, open the can of worms when it comes to prenups because that conversation will have to be a thing. And so she doesn't know if they're going to even get married, even though they're engaged. And hopefully, I mean, she'll do whatever works for her, but just, I just hope she protects herself. And I'm sure she will because Dr. Nicole is very intelligent. Um... And I think Dr. Nicole was not the breadwinner that too, even though she has her coins too, like good coins. But anyway, um, and then, then the subject of Dr. Nicole and her dad comes up and we know that her, her dad passed away, has since passed away. But what we did know, and I didn't know this either, or if I did, I forgot. Um, he passed away while she was, in Vegas for BravoCon. So, but she was able, of course, to talk to him before. And so, um, her, her, her um, dad did find out that she was pregnant and was having a baby. So at least that got handled. And also the subject about her and her other siblings came up and she really has no way of finding out some of these other siblings that she found out about on the show. Because the other thing that we forgot or, I mean, that happened during this season was Dr. Nicole found out she has way more siblings than what she thought she had. She has like eight, she has like seven other siblings or whatever, but she only knows like four of them or something like that. And, but now because he passed away, all of a sudden she has no way of getting a hold of them. She has no idea who the mom is or nothing. Um, also... You know, Dr. Nicole was so concerned about meeting her dad and her and her dad's girlfriend. They were doing great all throughout after the end of the season, everything else. But then when her dad passed away, now they're no longer cool because unfortunately her dad did not have a will. And her dad was paying for her rent and basically supporting her. And Dr. Nicole's like, well, I'm not going to be doing that. And so now they're no longer cool, unfortunately, after they did build a friendship so or relationship. Um, so, but 
Dr. Nicole does thank the show and give the show credit for bringing her and her dad together because um, they, and, and we know this, and she's done it multiple times, but she did it again because she was sweeping all her issues that she had with her dad under the rug, but then this show forced her to face the issues and they actually went to um, family counseling together and got figured out. And so the good news is when he passed away, they were in a good place. So that's all you can ask for. And then they switch focus and we talk about her now being pregnant now with a, with a girl who's on the way and Anthony being a girl dad. And we find out her partner Anthony is way over the moon excited about being a girl dad. And then um, Adriana actually asked Andy like, was it, is that how it's like for you? Because Andy is also, he is, I think he is a boy and a girl, but he's a girl dad also. And um, Andy's like, well, I'm a single parent, so I don't really feel that way as much. And then Larsa then <laughs> asked, well, do you feel like you need a partner? It literally became like an Andy interview. Andy was like, uh, okay, commercial break. <laughs> so that's how that segment ends. So they're having a brief break and Julia still is not apologizing to Lisa. And all the ladies are talking about how, okay, you do still, you should really apologize to Lisa still. Dr. Nicole is trying to coach um, Julia into doing that. And then Julia actually does, during the break, goes in. So she does end up apologizing, side note. But we find out a lot more tea of what leads to why she didn't do it, like in front of everyone. So Julia goes to Lisa's room or Lisa's dressing room during the break. And she's like crying immediately, but she's like, she wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her and have a conversation and not in front of the whole entire group. And so Julia breaks down where she's coming from and why she, the comment happened. Um, because Lisa is actually way more upset. It's like, she's upset about the, the implication of her implying she's a bad mom, but she's actually more upset about the comment because she thought that they were good. And then <laughs> the, like the, they got, the feud got reignited because of her comment, right? And so Julia presents the, the timeline. She's like, that comment where I reacted, that happened on Saturday. Thursday, before that, so two days before that, Thursday, her dad, Julia, um, so Julia's dad was sending, trying to be nice, sending um, pictures to Julia because her other child was moving. And so um, I think, I forgot if, there, if uh, they're moving to go to college or whatever. I don't remember. But the point is her other child was moving. And so her dad trying to be nice was sending all these old pictures of, you know, her dad and basically grandpa and, you know, the little and um, her child together. But when he sent the photos, he accidentally sent a photo of Max. And Max is her child that she lost. That th so she got triggered immediately because she saw that. And then when she saw that comment on top of that, she was already in her feelings and just made the response right away. Cause she was like, I mean, we know from watching the show that, and, and I don't know, cause I don't know how that feels. I don't know if you ever get over a situation like that, but we know that Julia is definitely not even close to being over that situation and probably buries it, you know? she. It seems like she has the same raw reaction as if it just happened. And I'm curious, I'm like, I'm wondering if she's ever gotten therapy for that, but I think she really needs to. Like, I know the, the emotional and the animals and all that is helpful, but I think she really does need to talk it through more. But I don't think, I think no matter what, she's never going to be over it. Cause I mean, I can't imagine that feeling but anyway so she's they do resolve things and they do apologize to each other she's like look I 
I am sorry. I know you, you're a great mother. Like it was very sincere. She was like, I just wanted to share the why I did that. And I didn't want to share all that with the group. I wanted to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, woman to woman about it. And Lisa received it and they were good. So right before they go back to, you know, airing the reunion, if you will, Lisa does share with the group and Andy that, hey, we did, we talked things over, we're good now. And um, Lisa, and then Julia mentions like, there was a lot of personal things I wanted to talk to her about. So that's why it was a one-on-one. -on -one. It wasn't any reason why I couldn't share with the rest of you guys, but there was just some personal things. And I'm sure once a lady see the footage, you'll understand why. So yeah. Last but not least, for this reunion, we talk about Gertie and her cancer journey. And we go over the whole thing and it is still emotional. I still get teary-eyed watching it. And we see the whole entire deal. And then we go from watching that, then, you know, Andy asks like about Russell and we see how supportive of a partner she has. And, you know, for those who don't know, she's been with Russell since, well, she's known Russell since high school. Um, and, but they didn't get together until like she was 17. So, yeah. And now she's 46. So they've known, they've, been together for 29 years. Yeah. That's her right. That they're they're each other's ride or die. Easily, right? Yeah. So um the other thing though on top of that is that um also the discussion of Gertie and her kids come up and um Gertie mentions like you know Liam is like her a Capricorn and then her older son, Miles, is a lot like um, Russell and he wants to fix, fix things and so he kind of shuts down. And we remember watching that scene. That was a really tough scene to watch, but it was very important because that is what happens. You do have to, you know, how do you tell your family? How do you handle all that? And then we find out that, um, well, we already knew this because it was presented in the season finale that she's in remission. But she has to get checked for, she has to get a mammogram every six months now. And that's going to be her life. And we also find out that when they show the footage of her getting chemo for the first time, what the cameras did not capture is that that did not go according to plan at all. She actually had toxic shock that happened. And she had to go to the, she had to go to emergency ER and everything. And it burnt her veins one of her veins, and she can't feel that arm. So her left arm, she can't really, like she, it gets, goes numb because her vein is gone. And, um, but she says she has the scars and she won't wear makeup or anything to cover it because she's very proud of those scars because it's a reminder that she beat that. She girdified it. And um, from there we go from like, her celebrating her victory to the cloud that is Larsa. Oh my gosh. And one of the viewers' um, questions pretty much kind of made it, kept it a buck and said, when someone tells you you have cancer, you shouldn't ask, are you sure? And why are you saying this now? Like, you know, have some coop and have some sensitivity. And um, so Larsa is still in defensive mode about her reaction and still is taking zero accountability. And then from there, we talk about Larsa and her loose lips and telling everybody within like, and I, I forgot if it was, I think it was like two hours of her, of, you know, Gertie telling her and then she goes and tells everybody, including people that don't even know Gertie. And she thought that was okay. And Lars is still doubling down, tripling down, saying that the reason why she told everyone is so that we will, they will rally around her. Not because she don't have a storyline, because we know that's the actual truth. Larsa has nothing to do really when it comes to this show. 
because no one, and I think she knows this, no one believes her fake relationship with Marcus. That's what it is. Um, and then she also stated, which was a lie, that she's apologized multiple times um, to Gertie about it. And no, she hasn't. She hasn't. And so Gertie's like, I don't know why you keep doing this. I don't have the energy for your density, but this is not what you want. And that's where the reunion part two ends. Yeah. Miami's her. You already know Miami's that girl. But anyway, that does conclude the review. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. And sorry, I'm pausing a little bit towards the end. All of a sudden, I know where I got really tired. But anyway, I'm going to bed now. Bye.